I shut my eyes and tried to slow my breathing. I looked at my phone to check the time once again. It was noon, yet it felt like I hadn't slept much longer. Why is time going so slowly? I sighed, got changed into normal clothes. Girl, go take a shower already! I went out into the main hall and sat on the stairs. Sundays were very boring. Well, that's on you. Go find something to do. Get a hobby. However, the muffled sounds of battle caught my attention. Huh? I quickly went out to the backyard in response to the noise I had heard. In the yard were all five boys. Really? Were, were they top? Well, clearly in the yard they're not topless, but I don't know what they're doing. Practicing fighting. Oh, okay, now I know what they're doing. Sam was in the middle. <laughs> I like where this is going. Hit him! With the other four surrounding him and throwing punches and kicks at him. Hit him! Sam, being the strongest of the bunch, blocked and dodged each almost masterfully. Gosh darn it. Hit him! You know what? You... You boys have fun. I'm, I'm gonna go back inside. I just watched. As you should. That's probably quite a show. The boys were very much in their own world, focusing on the training they were all in. It was better not to disturb them. I checked the time and decided to head inside to the kitchen. I was getting hungry, and I'm sure the boys would need to eat soon, so lunch was a must. Might as well make lunch today. It's been a while since I cooked. Lunch wasn't particularly hard. I decided to make nothing, because I am a terrible cook. Pizza, sandwiches, simple chicken and rice. I would I like all of these things to be honest. But as it's lunchtime, I feel a sandwich is a lot more practical. Since to me, chicken, rice, and pizza, th those tend to be more dinner foods for me personally. Because why not? And do we have grape upon? I assembled simple ham sandwiches for all of us. After I poured some potato chips on the side for each sandwich, I felt satisfied. This said lunch had to be cooked. Exactly. <laughs> I do not want to give them food poisoning. Even Sam. I placed the food in the dining room. However, none of the boys were there by the time I brought the final dish out. I carried that dish to the main lobby, catching the boys separating to different rooms of the house. Part of me wanted to go to one in particular. The other part of me wanted to just leave them be and take the food in my hand to my room and eat. Maybe I could go out today while the boys focus on training. Ooh, I like this plan. E except for, you know, the scary demon that kind of wants to, you know, kill me. Protection spell or no. You know what, I'm, I'm just gonna go. You boys, you boys have fun doing whatever it is you're gonna do today. I decided against bothering them. They knew where the food was, so I went to my room instead and ate alone in my room. It's not my problem. Exactly. It's not your problem, Mika. Atta girl. I turned on my computer and started to jam to music as I ate my food. As I ate, I began to think about going out. There were so many places to go, things to do, people to see. What should I do today? I think I'm in the mood for some coffee. Let's go to the cafe. I arrived at the cafe, ready to relax. I didn't want to be stuck at home on a Sunday. Besides, the cafe had always had something new to drink, no matter how often you came. That sounds amazing. Just as long as they retain, you know, your favorite. Because sometimes you just want comfort food. I entered the double doors and looked around. Not many people were in. And Caden seemed to be working hard. I mean, <clears throat> not many people were in, and Caden seemed to be working today. Oh, that's disappointing. Oh well, she can't always be working. I don't, I don't know about that. Yeah, she could. She's an NPC. She should be where I want her to be, darn it. I made my way to the pastry bar and, and took a look at what the cafe had to offer that day. There was always something new. Now. New now. I think they mean no. Anyway, something new now, matter when you came. 
which is what kept people coming, myself included. Now, I am the exact opposite. Once I find what my favorite thing is, I don't want to deviate from it. I like the predictability, if I'm going to be honest. As I browsed the lights, my mouth began to water. I had just eaten earlier, but the cafe's pastries always looked good enough to tease your appetite back into a hungry state. Both the smell and the look of each dessert was carefully crafted to appease. You didn't regret buying one and biting into it. As, you know, a good bakery cafe should. You know, I wish we could have seen, you know, what these look like. I finally made a selection and headed to the cash register to purchase my treat. What can I get for you? Hi, Lily. Hi, I'll take a couple chocolate and raspberry mochas and a pink lady latte, please. Coming right up. Cool. Lily was Kay's assistant, who mainly stuck to the cafe's finances and computer work. However, when Kay wasn't in, Lily took over and became the face behind the cash register, who gave you what you needed, like caffeine and sugar. I like her already. Lily, where's Kay? Kay had to fly out to New York suddenly. Oh. She said cool. it has something to do with delivering something special to someone. Ooh. I'm not too clear on the details. Aw, oh, sounds awesome. Aw, okay. Sounds like fun. Wish I could go to New York. Uh, Mika, you probably could. I'm just saying. I'm willing to bet your trust one, baby. Just buy a ticket and go. Don't we all? Here you are. Enjoy. Then again, we don't know where this story is taking place. If this is Japan, America, or somewhere else. I took my order to a far corner table and got comfy. The pink lady latte was a cafe special that everyone adored. It was a normal latte with a very subtle raspberry flavor. The foam was pink, too. Aww. I I yeah, I wish we could see this. Before I could indulge, however, a voice stopped me. If this is Malix or Sam, I swear. Oh, oh, hey! Mika! Say my name! <laughs> hey, you! Come sit down. I looked up to see Naomi enter the cafe with a small smile toward me. I smiled back, not expecting to see her. Hey, Naomi! Mind if I join you? Oh, please do. Not at all. Naomi nodded before quickly getting herself a coffee cake slice and a latte and joined me at table. I've been wanting to try their latte for a while. Is it any good? Oh, it's amazing. I like it. It has a nice raspberry flavor. Naomi gently blew over her latte to cool it before sipping it, smiling at the taste. Mmm, this does taste good. You know, we'll have right? to get this from now on. Cool. The raspberry is a really nice compliment with the coffee. Agreed. I giggled. Naomi loved food, and it wasn't made in the school cafeteria. She wanted to own a restaurant one day. Aw, good for her! She, she actually has a life goal. Mika, you could learn something. But always focused on studying the business side. Well, you kinda need both sides if you want to be an owner and, you know, manage and run one. Otherwise, you're gonna end up working for everyone your whole life. Not that there's anything wrong with that, you know, but... If you want to do both sides of the equation, yeah, you do have to have a mind for it. Naomi had natural cooking skills that made my grandmother seem like a novice at making you amazing food. Yeah, you know, we haven't met your grandmother at all. This is the first mentioning of her. <clears throat> you should get macaroons next time with it. The raspberry macaroons definitely bring out the flavor in the latte. I should. You should. Actually, we should get some, like, right now. Let's go. Naomi slowly grew a look of thought on her face as she stared into her latte, probably thinking about food again. Yeah, yeah, she's... She's totes thinking about food. Come on. Mika, why are you being dense? She's hungry and thirsty, but not for what the cafe has. It was during these moments that I got to see a simpler, almost beautiful side of Naomi. She was very smart, smarter than me. However, she always held a serious, very close to passion, dedicating her heart to her dream. Aww, that's amazing. It was enviable. 
I sipped my latte and ate a macaroon before speaking and breaking her thoughts. Thanks, by the way, for coming to my impromptu party. <laughs> I know it was last minute and all. Naomi broke away from looking at her drink to looking up at me in surprise, then with a smile. It was my pleasure, really. I mean, our pleasure. Suzu came too, and all. <laughs> yeah, Suzu's... Zuzu. Do you think I should set her up with Sam? I'm just saying, I think they'd be interesting together. If nothing more, then I'm pretty sure Zuzu could take him in a fight. Naomi blushed a bit before clearing her throat and taking a sip of her latte. She then looked at me again with a slight frown. But hey, how are you holding up from that? I'm sure meeting all those business people was tiring. Oh, you have no idea. I went straight to bed. <sighs> it wasn't anything I couldn't handle. I mean, my slave labor did most of the work, so let's be honest. It was just the suddenness of it that tired me out. Well, I'm sure you did great. It was a great party. Aww, the food you. was amazing. I know. My slaves, <laughs> servants, did an amazing job. It was amazing. I slowly began to remember the party, remembering how I felt alone throughout it. I wanted to be with my friends, but I had to put on my business air to impress my guests and my father. Did I try too hard? It was supposed to be a simple party, but it felt like a job interview. Only because it was. And no, I think you tried just the right amount. You impressed your dad and everything, we got the achievement. Before I got too deep in my thoughts, I felt a hand gently cover mine. I refocused my thoughts to reality, seeing Neoma gently holding my hand. Hey, I know that look. You're about to overthink it. Don't. You did great. I'm sure of it. Aww. This is why you're best girl, Naomi. I stared at Naomi, unsurprised that she caught on to my thoughts, and happy to know that she cared. Aww. So cute. Thanks, Naomi. Naomi smiled and blushed, giving a small nod. She was absolutely adorable when she smiled like that. I didn't know how. But her smile was able to make the room lighter. Aww, that's a pretty piece of art. Naomi then pulled her hand away, placing it back on her latte with her other hand and cupping the mug and sipping her drink. Naomi licked her lips and let out a sigh. This is really nice. A relaxing Sunday afternoon at a cafe. Yeah. See, this is what my life should be. Not crazy demons, Incubi, and uh, <laughs> you know nothing about that. Never mind, this, this is nice. It's almost like a date. All of a sudden, Naomi's face turned pink as she looked at me. Confused, I tilted my head and gave her a quizzical look. Naomi, are you alright? You're turning red. And that's my expression. Naomi must have snapped out of her trance. She found herself and tried to calm down from whatever was on her mind. Uh, oh! No, no, I'm fine! Really! Just a little warm, that's all! <laughs> uh-huh, you're warm, are you? Naomi brought her latte up to her mouth and began to drink. Practically chugged it down. It was actually kind of cute how flustered she got from a simple statement. I giggled quietly to myself before sipping on my latte. Naomi and I eventually lost track of time, and wound up chatting until late afternoon. When the cafe was hopping, Lily would join us, and we'd talk about silly things like TV shows or movies. Oh, wow! It's getting late! I gotta get home or my mom will flip! Yeah, I feel ya. I mean, I mean, I'm a free woman. I can come and go as I want. I do not answer to my parents. Aww, um, okay. Would you like a ride home? Yes. Yes, I do. That'd be great, thanks. We quickly headed out with Naomi driving me home. It was nice to be alone with her rather than have an explosive Zuzu around. I prefer Naomi's calm logic anyway. The remainder of the night passed by, surprisingly uneventful. The boys continued to train with each other, but were kind enough to stop and make me dinner. I was glad for that. Yes, serve me. Servants? Unsurprisingly, the food was perfect. 
but it felt a little empty without the boys to eat with me. They most likely had already eaten, but still, it felt lonely. I couldn't let it bother me. I had went back to my room to study and sleep. Surprisingly, I felt good going to bed that night. I felt like I could have peaceful sleep after the previous rough nights I had. It felt good. I drifted to sleep and woke up almost flawlessly that next morning. No grogginess, no aches, perfectly energized and bright-eyed. Man, how long has it been since I got so much good sleep? I looked at my alarm clock. I woke up ten minutes before my alarm. Oh, I hate that. Because you can't fall back asleep, and if you do, you'll just feel groggier for it. Well, hey, must be lucky today. I, I would consider that the other way around, but okay. Unlucky is also a form of luck, I guess. Karma owed me some luck. Karma owes you nothing. She is a bitch. After all, I'd gone through merely a handful of days. I've deserved to get some good luck. Oh, so you're looking to get lucky. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Waggles eyebrows. Static for the day ahead, I turned off my alarms before they could ring and got dressed. However, my phone started to quickly buzz from an incoming text. Huh? Who's texting me this early? Yo, Anderson! You're carpooling with us from now on. Ooh, cool. We're not letting you waste your money on a bus. Aww. Get ready and be at your gate at 7 stat. Oh, 7. Why so early? <sighs> but hey, it's better than the school bus. I'll say that much. I smiled. My friends were the best. I couldn't drive yet. Why not? Seriously, if you're going to live on your own, get a license, girl. I couldn't drive yet, and I didn't have a car, so it was awesome that my friends would let me carpool. Yeah, yeah it is. Also, uh, if you're going to be living alone without your parents, yeah, driver's license and a car. You know, it doesn't have to be anything flashy, but still. For emergency purposes, you should have those things. I checked the time. 6.30. Perfect. Girl, do you ever shower? You have to be filthy. I mean, perfect. I can eat some breakfast before they come. I packed my bag and carried it downstairs into the kitchen. I quickly made myself coffee and toast, not having time for anything big. Oh, you mean your servants didn't make food? Boo. I let a soft sigh in happiness as I sipped my coffee. I felt great, and I felt like nothing could stop me today. Come at me, Day. I'm ready for you. I looked at the time again. Time to go. I quickly rushed to the doors, checking myself in the passing mirror. I wasn't wanting to impress anyone, but I still needed to look decent. Uh-huh, you're not trying to impress someone. Are you sure about that? I mean, I have very different ideas than you. And right on cue, Naomi drove up to the gates with Zuzu waving me down. I rushed to the door and we headed to school, talking about homework in the coming day. We made it into the school without a hitch. Our lockers were in the same part of the hall, so we quickly unloaded what we needed to go and got out our important books and necessities. Ah, school. You know, I don't miss lockers at all. I really don't. First incident of the day. Oh, I don't like that. As I walked towards Zuzu and Naomi, who were both waiting for me on the opposite side of the hall, something hooked my ankle and made me fall death forward. Oh, yeah. The joys of school, and I do not miss this shit. What? Ow! Hey, are you okay? Yeah. Who did that? Exactly. Of course. The three of us looked back at Lizette and her gaggle of girls. Yeah, not everything is her fault. Lizette had a look of complete innocence while the girls around her giggled like, no tomorrow. Well, it, it is kind of funny when someone trips. I'm just saying. Why, you little... Down, Zuzu. Zuzu, don't! Thank you, Naomi. Thank you for being the voice of reason. 
I felt a giant fire of anger burn in my stomach as I stared at Lizette. Today was not the only time this had happened to me. Girl, you're clumsy. Just accept it. However, it was now clear who was behind these incidents. Or, you know, you've just had a rough week and maybe this is not the time. Even if she was innocent and one of her goons did it, it was now obvious that Lizette was the mastermind, just from the look on her face. Yeah, that, that look is kind of sinister. I mean, I have resting work face, so a lot of times people think I'm, like, annoyed or I'm ticked. It's like, no, I'm just working and I'm thinking about other stuff, but I don't think that's the case here. She was no friend, nor would she ever be. I had to do something. Should we do something? We should do something. Get her. Stand up and walk away. No. I wasn't going to bring myself to her level. She was a bully, but I was not going to let her get to me. I had to be stronger than her, and only then would I have beaten her. Exactly. Good mindset to have. I stood up and brushed myself off, pretending nothing had happened. Anderson, you okay? No, but I'm not bruised, so let's go. That was a pretty bad fall. Thank you. Thank you for your concern. You two are the best. <sighs> yeah, I'm fine. I feel like that is nothing. I'm just really clumsy. I merely smiled at them. Not wanting to let them know the pain rushing through my body from that fall. Oh, girl, you just tripped. It can't have hurt that much. My arms were quaking. My shoulders were pulsing. But I remained content-faced. I quickly gathered my belongings and nodded to my two friends. Oh, she looks ticked that I'm not having more of a reaction. Come on, we'll be late for history. Zuzu and Yami looked at each other before frowning and nodding to me. Naomi and, Z Naomi? <laughs> Naomi and Zuzu flanked me as we began to walk to class away from the gaggle of bullies. As we walked, I could barely see Zuzu flipping the middle finger to the group behind us from the corner of my eye. Zuzu, keep it classy. Come on, we're better than this. Friggin' bunch of Lisette feet lickers. Uh, that's... that's an interesting fetish for them to have. And you know if Lizette's down for it? Good for them. Foot fetish is nothing to be ashamed of. That's gross, Suzu. Hey, we do not judge here. If that's their kink and they're all consenting, more power to them. It's true. It's all OMG! Lisette is the best! Let's follow her around because we obviously don't have lives. Wow, you sound jealous. Naomi and I could not help but laugh. I I'm not laughing at that, truthfully. The group behind us, however, did not like Zuzu's words. At least my dad doesn't screw around in the black market to keep a stupid casino running. Ah, oh, rude girl, you're back! Is your twin here? Zuzu stopped. Naomi and I stopped as well to look back at Zuzu, who was completely red in anger, as you can tell by her art and her perfectly normal pale skin. Zuzu slowly turned ahead to the group, glaring daggers at them. Fuck did you just say? Yeah, bitch. What'd you just say? I had to act fast. I placed my hand on Zuzu's shoulder and gripped tightly, knowing she could try to push my hand away. Zuzu, they're not worth it. Just let it go. No, I think it's about time we taught them some manners. Yeah, well, let's go. I I've been itching for a fight. Zuzu! I looked at Lizette and her group. Lizette had a wildly amused smile on her face, which irked me to no end. Nevertheless, I knew that fighting wasn't going to get us anywhere. Let's go. I grabbed Zuzu by the shoulder roughly, pulling her back to Naomi and me. Zuzu tried to step towards the group, but Naomi held on to her other shoulder. We held on to Zuzu, who fought against our hands as we marched to class. Surprisingly, the rest of school day went off without another incident. Yeah, because I think they realized how close they came to getting their butts kicked. I went to my classes, had lunch, and was anxious to get home. As the bell rang for school to end, I felt my phone vibrate in my pocket. 
Huh? A text from dad? What the heck? Wh why? Why is he talking to me? Nothing good will come of this. Nothing at all. I'll be picking you up today. Make sure you're ready when I get there. Yeah, cause I got no life or plans of my own. None at all. That's kind of a surprise. Yeah, suspicious you might almost say. I quickly headed back to my locker and got my things before waiting for Naomi and Zuzu. Hey, are you ready to go? Yeah, let's go. Screw my dad. I mean, well, not literally, but... Actually, my dad's picking me up. Oh, you're friends. Really? Okay, I guess that kind of makes sense. Not really. Not knowing who my dad is, but... Mm -hmm. We'll drive home together next time. Tell cool. your dad that we've got you covered from now on. Will do. Also, you're better than my parents. Thank you, guys. Hugs. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Even while I laughed, something didn't seem right. Listen to your instincts, then. My dad texted me to say this? Why was he going to pick me up? Had I done something wrong? I didn't know. Yeah, and given how your dad acts sometimes, I don't blame you for being panicked. I waved goodbye to Naomi and Zuzu before heading off to the usual spot where my dad picked me up. I looked at the time. I took the time to listen to some music while I waited. I need to go to another Rise of the Phoenix concert. Eventually, I had played the entire album with no one showing up. That's weird. Also, you know, maybe some alarm bells should be going off. What the hey? Dad's never late, especially not this late. Uh, maybe it's time to make some calls. I quickly dialed my dad's number again, but as soon as I pressed call, it disconnected and read signal disconnection error message. <laughs> I don't like this. What the? No signal error? How do I have no signal? A question I often ask myself. I double-checked my phone and saw all five bars for signal. Oh, that's... Yeah. He must be in a dead zone. Before I could finish, a group of hands grabbed at my hands, feet, and covered my mouth. Yeah, like I said, nothing good was going to come of this. I screamed into the hand over my mouth, struggling to pull away from the hands grabbing at my limbs. It felt disgusting and scary feeling of their hands on me. I needed it to stop. I agree. That is freaking creepy. Hey! Uh, Don't dirty up Malix's prey! I, 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 you're so not my type. No, bad touch. Also, save. The voice, which sent a fearful shiver down my spine, whispered into my ear. You're coming with me, Miss Anderson. And that sounds nothing like a whisper. I couldn't fathom what was happening, but before I knew it, I was blindfolded and my limbs were quickly tied up. I felt myself being carried somewhere and was shoved into something that echoed the interior of a bus or a van. The doors closed and off I was taken, unsure of where I was going and why. Oh, what, what kind of game am I playing again? I didn't think it was that kind of novel. All I knew was that I was in trouble. All I saw was darkness. I felt numb as I was taken to a place I didn't know of. I couldn't even move my lips to scream. Zound zips past my ears. First of the interior of a car, then the outside, then an echoey space with whispers and crackles of people vibrating through it. However, the wrap around my eyes was eventually removed from my face and my bounds were cut. It took a while for my eyes to adjust. But I found myself in a warehouse, surrounded by devils, including Malix, who was smirking at me. Nicely done! <laughs> I'm sure those little shits will come running to find you when they realize you didn't return to your precious little mansion. They'll search everywhere for you. Oh, this is gonna end well. This is just all the... Why did I let them move in with me again? 
Seriously, why? Malik walked over and set the barrel of his gun against the skin between my eyes. It'll be so funny when they find your dead body instead. Uh, no, no, that that's the opposite of funny. That's sad. I don't think you know what words mean. Hmm. You know, I, I'm gonna do a little bit of alternate history here. I'm gonna show you what happens if you just choose wait. I could see Malix pulling the trigger before bracing myself. Click. Oh, what the fuck! Haha, <laughs> protection barrier, bitch! I opened my eyes again to see Malix jamming his finger against the trigger, trying to shoot me to no avail. Well, she either has the barrier spell on her, or you're losing your power. Ugh, don't you just hate it when boys lose their power? Smirk. Shut up! I'm not losing shit! This little brat must have that spell on her! Mm. You know, it happens to all guys sometimes. It's totally not a sign of you losing your masculinity. It's totally a sign, right? I felt a wave of relief run through my body. The other devils laughed at Malik's, which made him angrier. I said... Shut up! Keep laughing! Malik suddenly moved his gun toward a nearby devil and pulled the trigger. I stared wide-eyed as the bullet from Malik's gun rammed itself into the neck of the devil boy. The wound spouted fire and blood, causing the devil to scream and flail in extreme pain before falling limp to the ground. As the body hit the floor, it began to almost deform and melt. Blood and black ash poured out of the wound, and every opening of the body had, causing the smell of death to quickly fill the room. I felt like gagging as the body eventually stopped moving. The body became like a deflated balloon, showing me the true nature of Malx's gun. It was now just a pile of blood and skin. The bullet had burned up the muscle, bones, and any structure the body had to give its form. That could have been me. That could have been me. Anyone else want to laugh at me? Huh? No? Manly more? Manly man Malik's? The devils around to shut their mouths, obeying the warning of the obvious master of his face. Malik's growled before glaring at me. Uh, as I was saying, it must be some holy magic or some shit like that. Aries. Aries is here? Oh, no, I, that's final that. Never mind, different game. The girl who had kidnapped me stepped up beside Malix, looking to me. Malix wrapped a strong arm around her waist and pulled her tight against his side, before bearing his face against her neck. Eris didn't react, but continued to stare at me as Malix ravaged her shoulder, neck, and violent kisses. Uh, y you know, I I'm not down for voyeurism. I'm sorry, it's not my kink. I if that's your thing, good for you. Um, I am an unwilling participant in this, is all I'm saying. Eventually, Malix pulled away, licking his lips before looking to Eris' face. Be a dear and get rid of her barrier. Now. No, don't. Without another word, Eris walked around me, out of my line of sight. As I turned my head to try to follow her, Malix raised his gun to my face once again, forcing me to stop moving. I may not be able to shoot you yet, Rat, but there are other ways I can beat the living shit out of you. Yeah, this this is true. You know what? Still not gonna do anything. This is this is surreal. I didn't say a single word. I knew how to defend myself against anything he had to offer. I was slowly losing my fear of him, and it is oddly satisfying. Uh what was that? All of a sudden, however, I felt the air escape me and rush behind me, sucked away from me by a mysterious force. It was like a large vacuum was pulling my soul out from my back. What was even worse was that I felt stuck in place as this was happening. I turned my head to barely see Arius holding a red orb that was absorbing a white stream of air and possibly magic from my body. Arius kept her eyes to my back 
but Malix grabbed my face and made me look back at him, smirking. That barrier around you won't be protecting you much longer. Be patient, little human. Uh, okay. Before Malix pulled away, he slapped his hand against my cheek a couple of times. Not enough to force my head to turn, but enough to hurt and leave a powerful sting. I wanted to do something. I needed to. I was going to die if that barrier was removed. Uh, servant slave boys? Get the fuck in here already. And we're gonna wait. I stood there. That's all I could do. I waited for someone to save me. I waited for someone to stop Malix and Eris. Waiting was all I could do. Waiting was all I convinced myself I could do. Eventually, I felt lighter, and the air stopped moving around me. Eris had finished her job. I didn't felt so protected anymore. I think they mean feel. There's a few typos here. I felt fear consume me as Malik's smirk grew horrifyingly wide. And that's it for you. Hmm? No, no, I have the power of safe state. Malix quickly placed the barrel of his gun between my eyes, and once again pulled the trigger. I didn't even get the chance to close my eyes. End. And that's it for you. End. And this is one of the potential endings you can get for this game. Like I said, there are many, many different paths for this game. I don't know how many I'm gonna get to do, but this is not the end for Mika. Not even a little. Because, like I said, I, I possess the power of save states. Also, achievement unlocked. That's it for you. Now let us go load our game. And let's, let's try a different path. Because like I said, Mika is a strong, independent woman. She don't need no man. Malix walked over and set the barrel of his gun against the skin between my eyes. It'll be so funny when they find your dead body instead. Keep smirking. I'm just counting all the teeth I can break. Fight. No way this was happening. No way was I going to let myself be a victim of this. Also, achievement unlocked. Fuck you, Malix. I, I will. What are you whimpering? Are you praying that the boys will come and save you? <laughs> I don't even <laughs> I closed my eyes and took a breath before snapping up to one leg and sweeping my feet across Malix's face. Add a girl! Woo! Get him! Ha! Oh. I took Taekwondo, bitch! Malix flew to the side and rolled, rubbing his cheek in complete shock. I could feel Eris step back away from me, leaving me to look at Malix and shake my foot out from a, the hit. Malix quickly hopped up and growled at me, obviously surprised, but irritated beyond belief. You little bitch! You think you're tough, huh? I know I'm tough. I'll show you your place! Come here! No, you're not my type. Malix charged at me, dropping the gun that would never hurt me to the floor and reaching for my face. However, I quickly crouched down and swept my leg in front of me, knocking Malix down once again. Lame. Huh? I rolled back away from the fallen devil and glared as I rose back to my feet. Just because I'm human doesn't mean I can't kick your ass. I placed my hands in front of me before sliding over to Malix and slamming the tip of my foot into his head. One of the devils around us tried to step in, but Eris held out her arms, stopping them. Yeah, Eris, be on my side. No! Stay out of it! Let Malik deal with it! At a girl, exactly. As commanded, the devils that surrounded us stood away from the fight. The group watching us was lost in intrigue as I stood up against their leader. I'm just saying, I, I, I could lead you. I, I could be in charge of this. I continued to kick at Malix, who tried to block my kicks with his arms. I brought a foot up before slamming it down onto Malix's chest. I definitely heard a rib or two crack at the impact, causing Malix to lose his breath. Ha <laughs> ha. 
What I didn't expect was him grabbing my leg and pulling it out from under me. I fell to the ground, landing with a thud. Oof! I felt pain shoot up my arms and run through my body, at the impact my body had on the ground. I tried to push off, but the pain forced me to stay down. Alex took that chance to roll on top of me and pin me down, glaring and smirking down at me evilly. As I tried to get him off, the futility of the situation dawned on me. Darn it, we are doing so well. I was fighting a devil. It was just a human. It wasn't magical, nor was I special. Girl. Besides the incubi living with you, ghost granddad, having a protection barrier, you're not normal. You might just be a human, but you are not normal. You are very much the special. I wasn't going to beat him. I don't know about that. Fight, girl, come on. It's useless, woman. You're as good as dead. No, I'm not. You quit trying to fight me in the first place now. I don't know about that. Fear began to consume me. Oh, for the love of God, please someone find me, I prayed. I hoped that I wouldn't keep fighting. I was becoming desperate. You have major balls trying to fight me. I do, thanks. You're not even a man. You're a puny woman. Hey. It's coming to her. Uh, I don't like where this is going, game. I do not want to romance the devil boy. All I'm saying. What made everyone in that warehouse drop our fighting faces was a screeching of police sirens coming closer to our location. Malik smirked even wider. It's time to have fun, boys! Make sure you kill them all! Uh, no? Thank you, Eris! The devils all seemed to get excited and started to walk past us to meet the cops, but a loud finger snap stopped them and made them turn around. Alex and I looked to Eris with her hands in the air, post-snap. And by in the air, we mean casually at her sides. Eris? What are you doing? Yeah, what are you doing, Eris? Thank you. Enough, Malix. We've wasted enough time in this stupid town. Yeah. I'm getting out of here, and I'm taking the rest with me. Atta girl. Usurp him. I didn't know whether to laugh or not. I bit my tongue as Malix got angry again. Like hell you are! Boys, do as I say, or else! Or else what? You were getting your butt kicked by a human not two seconds ago. None of the boys moved. Eris snapped her fingers again, causing the boys to rush back past her and out another way from the warehouse. Malix, it's over. Yeah, Malix. You can't even beat a human girl. Exactly. You're losing your powers. Yeah, impotent. Lower devils only follow higher-ups that actually have power. You tell him, Eris. Shut your mouth! You shot yours. Malik summoned his gun to his hand and shot multiple times at Eris, who somehow managed to teleport away from the shooting line and reappear, reappear by us. She shook her head, letting out a sigh, before grabbing Malik's by the neck and pulling him off of me. Malik started to choke as Eris started coldly at him. All this for a bunch of pretty boys. I know, right? You must be stupid and desperate. I mean, if he wants to set him up with Sam, I totally will. I just don't think they're going to work long term. That, you know, I don't blame him. They are very pretty. Eris looked to me, making me tense up. Human! Yes? I suggest heading home to your pretty boys. Will do! You don't want to get involved in a supernatural investigation. It's a pain in the ass. Agreed. Thank you. She then turned back to Malix, glaring daggers into him as he glared back at her. You really think women are weak? Oh, get him. Let me fix that, sweetie. Oh, get him, Eris. And with that, Eris vanished into the shadows, taking Malix with her. As I was left alone, the police siren stopped. I looked over to the open passage to see the incubi of large police siren megaphones staring at me in surprise. You know what, boys? Better frickin' late than never. Seriously. Where is he? I swear I'm gonna... Sam, shut the fuck up. He's gone. Eris took him and left. I won't be coming back. 
It was all so surreal. I was helped by a devil? But I quickly shook off the feeling. I was alive, and that was all that mattered. I fought to stay alive, and there I was. The boys tried to question me, but James cleared his throat, catching the attention of his brothers and me. Let's just get you home, miss. Thank you. There's nothing more to see here. Yeah, let, let, let's go. All together, we began to walk to the warehouse back home. There was no way in hell anyone was going to find out about this. Until my tell-all book. My life, but thank you, bye. I'm just saying, they'll all be poised topless on the cover. It'll look great. It was over. Phew. 